What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Pat McAfee talks about his WrestleMania match getting stunned by Stone Cold Steve Austin. Man, Pat McAfee easily had, if not in my personal opinion, probably the best match of WrestleMania 38 Night Two. His match was fantastic. The crowd was so hyped up for his his entrance uh, song. Uh, the song he came down to walking down the ramp. They were singing it through the entire match. They were hyped for his moves. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I I could be wrong here. But I do think Pat McAfee had a louder crowd reaction than the main event between Roman and Brock. I'm going to be honest with you. In my personal opinion, throughout the entire match, I feel like they had the, the crowd was just so energetic. Easily stole the show. Pat McAfee is a gem on commentary, and he's pretty good in the ring for someone that does not traditionally wrestle. But he's a fan of wrestling, and he respects wrestling. And I, I, he just that whole segment with Pat McAfee, that match was fantastic between him, him and Austin Theory. So I definitely want to see what he has to talk say about this whole situation. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get right into this one. I got a little, uh, you know, bruised up, banged up. Ooh. I'm incredibly hungover right now. <laughs> and uh, that plane left Dallas a lot later than I thought it was going to this morning. You know, there was mm -hmm. different plans, and then obviously things happened. Sure. Last night was a dream come true. Last night I had the time of my life. Last night um, I should have been undefeated at WrestleMania, and then I got, you know, well, that set match, up. Yeah, that I, I got bamboozled. Big time. I, I, that was, there's no way that was a sanctioned match. No, 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 no. That one didn't. So no. I'm still undefeated at WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No one does. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Undefeated at WrestleMania. And then also, um, you know, had 10. What? Nine, what? 11. What? 15. What? Nine, 20, what? 25, what? <laughs> maybe 30 beers left. <laughs> yeah. So uh, absolutely thankful for everybody and everything. Austin Theory, you know, he, he's a good kid. He's on his way. I was very fortunate to be in there. And there was some cool stuff that took place at WrestleMania. And shout out to everybody on the internet that gave me a lot of love last night. I can't thank you enough. I was trying to go through it on the plane, but it was... I was getting a little dizzy because the amount of, <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, there were there skies. Are a, lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of tweets. Yeah, there, well, everybody was so fucking nice. And then I had 152 text messages as well. I will try to get back to everybody. I promise that. Uh, but thank you all so much. Last night was a fucking dream, and you all are the best. With that being that said, the talk to table is here. At Ty Schmidt, at Boston Connor. How's the gobble ghoul, cuz? Uh, there you go on the shirt. On the top rope over there when you did that. Uh, I think it was, what, right before, right before you it. did the swanton? <laughs> You gave one of these? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was hilarious. There's so many good moments in that match. I mean, I shit. Gave, gave a couple of Roethlisberger's. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. A couple of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. That, that, that was sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, um, like, you don't, like, what am I supposed to do here? You know, I started thinking that yeah. when I walked out for that entrance. <laughs> And I was standing there, the fucking Cowboys cheerleaders were out there. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that was happening. That's awesome. <laughs> so then I go out, and I'm like, by the way, thank you, Jack White, man. Yeah. Shout out. <clears throat> Shout out to the White Stripes, kind of letting that one play. You know, I guess that's not an easy task mm -mm. for So shout out to the WWE also making that happen. But I yeah. walked out there. As soon as I walked out. That is not an easy task to get a song like that played at WrestleMania. That's not. Like, the amount of money WWE probably had to fork over was a lot, man. That's why they usually do, like, create songs in-house because it's obviously cheaper. But trying to get songs made by somebody else, yeah, man, they going to charge some money. So, But it worked out. It, it, it made his entrance that much better. It's like an open up and it's like a <clears throat> closet, but it's like in a... It's like a mobile closet, right? Yeah, yeah mm. but it's like a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a big one. It's on wheels. And I, I walked... She was in... Uh, it was in the Thunderdome. I walked in and she had like five or six of the Undertaker's row and then like uh, Nature... Uh, Ric Flair stuff was in there and all this stuff. I'm like, damn, like, this is a hell of a collection. And she's like, just some of the stuff, you know, I've done. She's been there for, like, 20, 30 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, like, I started like, hey, fucking, okay, look at you. And, like, the first time I fist bumped her, she fucking tried to break my hand. <laughs> so this lady hit my hand. I'm like, damn. I'm like, all right, nice to meet you or whatever. So then the next week, our conversation, I'm like, 
Hi, Miss Terry. Very nice to uh, see you. Hope all is well. Fist bump again. Boom, she's throwing like a heavy right. I'm like, oh, she works like stiff. Like, this is insane. What's going on? So our relationship built because her trying to bust my hands every single time she gave me a fist bump. And we always chatted about how talented she is, like in her work and everything she's done. Like the 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 seamstress crew, the uh, costume mm -hmm. making design. I don't even mm -hmm. fucking know what it is. Yeah. I, I think I had one of those classes in college. I have no idea what that <laughs> department of humans is. The <laughs> things they create have been a part of WWE for so long. And they're all such incredibly cool people and hardworking people. So like me and Miss Terry have always talked like about all the cool stuff she made. I'm like, hey, maybe one day, you know, like mm -hmm. maybe one day I'll get my shit made by you. And she's like, oh, I would love that or whatever. So then WrestleMania weekend, I had not thought about what I'm wearing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had not thought about what I was wearing at all. I'm just gonna walk out there in black pants and a goddamn tank top. Like, <laughs> what are we talking about? And then I started looking around at everybody else. Like when I got there, when I arrived on Saturday, Logan Paul was in one of the coolest. Yeah, tall. so yeah. sweet. Yeah. Logan Paul's fit. Logan Paul's and the Miz, their their fits. I ain't gonna lie to you, that shit was tough. And the Pokemon card, that was such a flex. It's like a six million dollar Pokemon card, flexing. You may not like him, but you can you can say, at WrestleMania 38, Logan Paul, he showed out. He definitely showed out. Yeah, coolest things I've ever seen in my life. And I like thought to myself like. Man, I'm putting on a goddamn tank top and black pants. And I saw somebody else had like a full, like almost a parade float around them. And they're like, yeah, it's WrestleMania. I'm like, it is. So I walk into Mysterio. I'm like, hey, I need, I need to WrestleMania five. <laughs> and she's like, I got you. And she glued that shit on every, like by hand. Damn. Yeah, damn. Like, day up, like almost damn near 24 hours beforehand. And we had a pretty cool moment. Like, hey, I appreciate you or whatever. So like WrestleMania, not just like, the match, which was awesome, getting stunned, hilarious, yeah. so <laughs> hilarious, unbelievable, hilarious, <laughs> unbelievable. Dude. I did not know that was happening. Like that, such a good moment. Even Pat McAfee's not safe from a stunner. That was just such a good. Oh man, bro. WrestleMania 38 definitely had some high moments. Where the moments were high, it, it just. Oh man, I, you just. You feel the nostalgia. You feel the the vibes of what wrestling used to be. Some of our favorite legends and heroes. You know what I'm saying? Like, seeing them in 2022 do the things we we used to love them for back in the Attitude Era is just, just such a great feeling. Such a great WrestleMania vibe. It was so stupid. It was, it was so, so dumb. And I am... Uh... I'm so thankful. And that second match didn't happen. No, no. no. Still yeah. The commission what was, never. What was his problem? Yeah, I don't know. Literally, I, I mean, I did say. I think he just wanted to show off. Well, I told him, too. Yeah, I think so, too. By the way, I had a black tank top on. I don't know if it was. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of oh, yeah. interesting there. He, made, <laughs> he, looked, he has no business looking like that as a 76 year old. Yeah. I was no. so. I, I kind of told him that, too. Like, well, there's still 86 year old bones underneath all that shit. I'm so elated and excited for you to get the win over Austin. And then all that bullshit happens, and I see Vince start taking his shirt off. I'm like, oh no, this is not good. But you that man is still jacked. You should have heard the stadium whenever he was thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whenever he had that jacket on and he t started attempting taking it off, man, there was like a, like yeah. a buzz raising in there. And I was like, is this. Is this. So I. People need to know, like, the wrestling business. People understand what the wrestling business is. But there's things that happen out there on a very regular occasion that are not like, mm -hmm. you know, hey, this is not how this is supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And you just are, like, there's people around that are like, uh, hey, yeah, this is happening now, basically. <laughs> and I, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, what the? All right. I sat up on the ropes, you know. Mm -hmm. I sat there for a second. <clears throat> and I looked around, and I saw a 76-year-old Vince McMahon taking his shirt off i'm like is this a movie right now like i watching that happen i was like yo this is no way this has happened in 2022 and bruh once he took off that jacket and started un uh unhooking the tie i was like oh bro he he's he's really about to do this vince has not been on camera especially in a wrestling capacity in so long it's been a long time he's usually behind the scenes to see this at wrestlemania not gonna lie to you it was a surprise it, it, did it need to happen no but i'm okay that it did happen it was entertaining as hell
Like, this has to be a simulation. And then, obviously, Austin Theory attacks me. Yeah, right. Bullshit. Yeah. Vince abuses his power. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that ref, what the fuck was he yeah, doing? Yeah, that was horse shit. Take yeah. control. What was that ref even doing? <laughs> I have Nothing. no idea what he was doing. But, yeah, it was all very, very dumb. How do you feel today? Uh, this, one's, this one's a little sore. Where did that come from when you... Where'd like, you hit him? Right in the face? No, no, shoulder tat. He was uh, standing outside the ropes like an yeah. idiot. Such <laughs> a guy. And I, I'm sure there was a much more athletic way to go about doing whatever happened there. But I just sprinted full speed and shouldered him. And uh, there, that rope was right. It slingshotted me. <laughs> yeah. I did not prepare for the aftermath. <laughs> Boom. And then wham, I was down. There was another moment where I was... I went much further than I thought I was going to be going. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my God. I'm almost out of the ring right now. They, they, they gave us a couple times in there where I thought I was in bad shape. But I feel good, AJ. I feel re really, and I don't want to undersell this, really hungover right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? From, oh, man. From what you had inside the ring that we saw on camera, and of then course. what was there, a thing afterwards? Well, you know, there might have been. There might have been, Yeah. A lot afterwards. A lot. Of Some inside there, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being honest with you. If I'm wrestling at WrestleMania for the very first time in front of 70,000 fans, something that almost every kid that grew up watching wrestling always dreamed about, best believe I'm throwing me back some drinks after the match. Best believe you know I am. Got you. And uh, that beer did taste delicious. Although I was, you know, down and out. Yeah. That beer, and <laughs> I'm happy we got. I'm happy they caught that. Oh yeah, because that I was, was a good. Just trying to take that entire thing down. In my head, I'm like, can I put this whole thing down right now? And it started like obviously coming out of my mouth, filming because that's a tough way to drink there. <laughs> yeah. That fucker disappeared though. I, oh yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, I got rid of that thing. It was. That was awesome. <laughs> that was a funny moment. He's over there on the ground, just still drinking it. That was bro, Pat McAfee. He's one of the best additions. To WWE television. He is a true gem. I think oh that Stone Cold was coming out night two as well. So I, listen, I was sitting there just befuddled by everything that was going on in my life right there. You know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not good enough in that business for everything that happened. There was a lot of trust that was placed upon me, I think. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Hindsight that should not have been, I don't think, that should not have been. Because I'm in there and I'm like, God damn, like. I should have been given a heads up. Like, how many times have I done three times? I've done this three times. Like, should I have not have been given, I, like, hindsight looking back on it? I was like, man, what the? They were really, really confident in me figuring some stuff out, I guess. And that's dope because from what he's saying, they didn't tell him pretty much nothing other than what to do for the match, but that's it. Everything else, he's just like, the Vince thing, yo, what's happening here? The, the Stone Cold thing, What's happening here? He didn't even know he was going to get stunned. That's pretty cool, bro. That's pretty cool for them to have that much trust in you. Like, hey, he'll figure it out. He'll he'll understand. That's cool. I love that. Yes, but it was uh, it was cool, AJ. I mean, it was awesome. Hey, it was awesome. Like, I, I watched. I didn't know when you were going on, so we started watching. It was actually, I appreciate them throwing Otis in there. That helped my kids through a little bit. They were waiting to see you. So Otis pops out. They were juiced, man. They were so pumped to watch him. But. <laughs> Uh, yeah, watching, oh, awesome. watching your yeah, live. Awesome. Yeah, like Herbie texted me during it. I'm sure he's texted you a few times. Like Herbie was texting me and blown away by your performance. And yeah, it was awesome. I didn't know what to expect. I never do going into these things, watching them. I had no idea what you were doing. I know I joked about Vince coming and blasting you in the back of the head, which, hey, look what happened. I knew when I saw Vince, when Vince comes walking down the old ramp, he comes strutting down there. I was like, here we go. This is what I'm <laughs> and then we all know Vince sit down by the commentator's table. You think Vince is going to sit there and let his dude get beat up by you? We knew Vince was coming in. All right, you did, okay? And <laughs> when I saw that he was getting introduced, you know, before all of us, and he was going out to the ring, you know, there was quite a... AJ Hawk's been saying this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. AJ Hawk's been saying this. How about... I him? loved Vince. Oh, yeah. Dude. Everything about him in, inside the ring, the, the whole... Stunner wow. with Stone Cold, how they, they figured that one out. Like, it was all awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was going <laughs> to eat. What are you talking about, dude? Well, I mean, what? things you got you to gotta react on the fly. Sometimes things don't go exactly as planned. Bro, he got kicked so hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's... That's everybody's, what I'm saying. He was able... Stone. I'm saying Stone Cold was still able to execute. Yeah. By the way... Uh, that stunner was easily one of the worst stunners we've ever seen. But it was just funny because Vince, he stumbled back. So... 
Stone Cold had to nah. You gonna take this stunner? That that was a good. That was a cool moment. Even though it was a botch, it was still a cool moment to see. It was quite hilarious. I don't know how Vince got up for that kick because you know everybody talks about the stunner. You should feel the kick. <laughs> I can imagine oh, the I kick before it. Boom! Right to the guts. I mean, there. Vince McMahon, seventy-six years old, just got through a match with me that was not sanctioned. So I'm still, <laughs> yeah. I'm still undefeated. I'm yeah, still, that was just like a, a little, like a brawl, like a street brawl. That doesn't count. Well, mm -hmm. and I got my kids bamboozled off the thing. That's right. The exactly. whole ordeal over there, buddy. Also, I know I joke about it whenever I talk about. It. Um, Adam Cole, you guys get mad at me when I say he's a good dude. That I get it. I understand Austin Theory. I understand what he's doing. That dude, he is very good at what his what he is doing. How he's investigating. How he's he's a great foil. He's a great foil to you. Like foil. he he plays that role great. I feel like he it takes a special person to get up there and try to get everybody to hate him and everyone to boo him. Yeah, it's not easy. He's not trying, by the way. His personality is great for that for well, wrestling. We were talking a little bit earlier. He's incredibly handsome. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's very athletic. Yeah, sure. seems to talk very well. Mm -hmm. There's people that have been lied to him that say this guy's got a great personality. He's right. working like four or five nights a week at this point. With that being said, he was too goddamn cocky. You know, he's mm -hmm. young. He had to be served a little ha ha. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, wakey wakey, cuz this is the WWE. He said commentator ha, ha. sitting over there that'll beat you if you want to. He was parading around with me on his show. Ah, I was out of it, okay? He could have had me there. That's his finisher he was about yeah. to drop on me. And then all of a sudden, boom, I'm back to my senses. Oh, there's 80,000 people here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. What's going on? And why are you like, ah! you know I mean? that's, that's how I get to win. But that's those are little things he's going to, you know, pick up on his journey to hopefully becoming, you know, a better person. Like, whenever Vince introed him, though, he said, future, mm -hmm. yeah, WWE Universal <laughs> Champion, Austin. Th That's a huge deal. That is. Okay, so when Drew McIntyre first came, um, he called him like the chosen one. Mm -hmm. Like basically when Drew McIntyre first came over, he said, this is like the chosen one. I forget the exact word that she used when he introed him. And Drew McIntyre obviously didn't know that was coming at the time. But everybody that's a WWE fan sees Vince say that and they're like... Okay, so Vince fucking likes this guy. Like, yeah. this a guy. Yeah, Vince Vince is not going to say that on live television unless he truly feels that. He's been in multiple segments with Vince. They, they're going with the storyline. Vince has picked him, handpicked him. He will be a future champion. Vince sees a lot in Austin Theory, and I'm starting to like him more as a heel. You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to get invested in him as more as a heel. He's doing a fantastic job as a heel because people just hate him. He's just a smug prick. You know what I'm saying? So if Vince is saying that, he's going to be a future champion at some point. Unless something happens and they they he either, you know, something happens with Austin Theory, he messes it up, or maybe Vince decides otherwise. You know, I'm, I'm not going to put that in the universe. You know, I hope he's able to at some point be a universal or WWE champion, but... When Vince backs you, that's usually a really good thing. Now, it didn't work out for Drew that time. Then Drew had to come back or whatever. But whenever he introed Austin like that, like I bet you Austin was standing in the back and all of Austin's friends were like, God damn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh, here we go. So I'm, I'm very happy for Austin Theory's journeys going forward. But I'm happy, you know, also to be a part of the journey of smacking him around. Hey, fucking enough with your bullshit. Wait <laughs> until you hear. Cole and Byron call it more specifically Cole. Cole was yeah. Cole was on one. Yeah. Mark top tier. Out. Yeah. He, he told me beforehand that this is one of the first matches in a long time he was like super excited for. He was. I don't think he sat down. Yeah. He was on an emotional roller coaster. No, Michael Cole was so excited for him to win. I hadn't seen him that excited when he was going for the Miz. Y'all remember that? When he was like a Miz fanboy? This was one of those times. Michael Cole on commentary, he was so excited for Pat McAfee, man. So the whole time he was on the verge of tears at one point, and then I think he was orgasmic towards the end. Yes. Wow, that's that's awesome. I, I don't know. Pin him, Pat! Pin him! Yep. I was sitting outside, you know, <laughs> after I got my ribs brutalized. I was coughing up. You know, I didn't, I didn't know if blood was coming From up. the football? The punt? Yeah. That was an that was an added touch. Like so that was that the football that you blasted into the atmosphere when you on your entrance? No, so there was four <laughs> the ball situation, believe it or not, was a whole thing. It was, <laughs> it was a whole deal. The ball what you, was what do you mean? The ball was a whole deal. Yeah, because there was there was Because the ball is the program. The ball is the program. True. I tried to explain that to a couple people, like, hey, <laughs> the ball the ball, the ball, the ball. Yes. <laughs> I tried to explain that, you know? Like I I tried to have that conversation. 
But obviously, there was a couple different balls over there, and then were the balls good enough to make it on WrestleMania? <laughs> I don't know. You know, like, it was awesome. That whole thing, that whole thing was amazing. That was cool, man. This whole little segment was cool. Pat McAfee easily had, in my opinion, probably the best match of night, too. Like, his match was so good. Crowd loved it. I enjoyed it. We enjoyed it on the live stream. It was just it was just a good time, man. Pat McAfee is a true gem in WWE, and I would not mind seeing him wrestle again at some point if the feud makes sense. He always shows out and have fantastic matches anytime he's in the ring. But comment down below, let me know. Did you guys enjoy Pat McAfee versus an Austin Theory as much as I did? Or did you guys feel like it, you know, that it was okay? You know, so let me know your opinions on this particular match. I thought this was fantastic. It was great. Looking forward to seeing some more matches with Pat McAfee in the future when it makes sense. But I appreciate all the love and support. Bro, too. 80K, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next time.